Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Beanie and welcome back to another video guys today is the day my biggest video every year or now I guess it's my biggest video series every year. It's my zone hitting tutorials because I'm splitting my zone hitting tutorial up into two videos this year. Last year I split it up into three. This year I think it'll just be better if I split it up into two. Today is going to be the beginner and the intermediate zone hitting tutorial. So the very beginning of this video is going to be more for the beginner side of things. The second half is going to be more intermediate. So if you feel like you're too good for the beginner version of this tutorial, you can go ahead and skip to to the middle portion of this, but I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest sticking around and seeing maybe if the beginner has something that, uh, that you haven't thought of before. But as always, with every zone hitting tutorial that I do, the first thing that I talk about is lineup construction because it's vital for everything else moving forward that we're going to talk about. This year, lineup construction is even more important than it has been in the past because pitching is completely different. Now you get to choose your pitcher, and pitcher energy heavily affects how gameplay rolls out. Not only that, they have a three batter minimum that you have to think about. So it's even more important to make sure that you are balancing your lineup. And what do I mean by balancing your lineup? I mean that you never have a lefty and a lefty hit back to back, that you never have three lefties hit back to back. That would be a disaster an absolute disaster instead what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have if you don't have any switch hitters make sure that your lineup is lefty righty lefty righty lefty righty lefty righty uh, so that if your opponent brings in a left-handed reliever to face Joey Gallo then he has to face Aaron Judge right after that and he's probably gonna have a really bad time in doing that or if he brings in a righty to face Carlos Santana, he's going to have to face, or not Carlos Santana, Carlos Correa, he is going to have to face Carlos Santana and Joey Gallo right after that, and he's probably going to have a bad time. So the three batter minimum gives you a real advantage whenever you're constructing your lineup if you know how to exploit it. And I think it's very important that everyone get that through their head. Also, think about platoons. You may have a guy like David Ortiz, who is very platoon heavy. He, he does not hit left-handed pitching all that well. There are two things that you want to take into consideration whenever using a guy like this. One, you want to make sure that he has an effective platoon on the bench. So maybe Justin Turner would be that David Ortiz's platoon card. Maybe he would be the guy that I went to. Maybe I get somebody else. Maybe I buy someone off the market that can hit lefties better. Sorry, I almost had a hiccup there. Um, the other thing that you want to take into consideration is that you want to protect those guys in your lineup. So who do I have that hits lefties best? It's probably going to be this Carlos Correa card. Right now, he is protecting this Eddie Matthews. Even though Eddie Matthews isn't as bad as that David Ortiz card, if he, he's still not great. So if they bring in a lefty to face this Eddie Matthews card, they're going to have to get through him. But after that, they are going to have to face probably the best hitter on my team against left-handed pitching. So that is going to be a major problem for them. Not only that, they're going to have to face that Carlos Santana afterwards, it, it, especially if they want to face that Joey Gallo, depending on where they bring them in at what point in the order. So, uh, so yeah, lineup construction, extremely important. I just thought I would take a couple of minutes out just to kind of drive that home to all of you guys. Even if you don't use zone hitting, this is something that you really want to take into consideration. But uh, now that we've talked about that, let's get into the fun part, and that is that actual hitting. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to beginning zone hitting as a beginner, before I, before I go into this, let me just say that if you are a bit more advanced in zone hitting and uh, you think that it's time for you to take the training wheels off or whatever, do not listen to this advice. This advice is purely for those who are coming into zone hitting or maybe have dipped it, their toe into it for a, for a few weeks or so and they just can't figure it out. This is the training wheels version. This is what I'm going to be telling you right now is the things that will help you get better eventually. So, okay, on OO count, what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to sit your zone in one place and look for one pitch. That was a four-seam fastball right in my zone. That is a pitch that you would want to swing at. 
on an uh, uh yeah okay we got another o account here i forgot we can uh just do that on o accounts just sit i mean I, I i'm a little bit better than that so i it's just muscle memory at this point for me to do stuff like that but yeah just sit in one zone whatever zone that may be and look for a fastball or look for a curveball or whatever on an o account look at this he is just giving me the pitch that i want every single time okay so that is on an oo count what do you want to do on a let's say an o2 count on an o2 count you're gonna have to learn how to use zone hitting uh basically you're you're gonna sit your pci you're gonna start your pci in the spot that is most uh comfortable to you and you're gonna have to learn how to track pitches and this is something that we're gonna get more into into the uh the intermediate hitting tutorial but I just wanted to mention that on a one strike count uh, or on a two strike count sorry that, uh, it, that there's basically no little gimmicks that you can do it's basically gonna be this but on a one strike count instead of sitting your zone and waiting for just one pitch like sitting right here and waiting for fastball you can wait for any pitch you can wait for a curveball you can wait for a slider you can wait for anything and if it's in that zone uh, then you can hit it. What this will do is this will really help you learn how to time pitches. It'll help you time fastballs. It'll help you time sliders. All that work is going to be done on 01 counts, 1 1 counts, uh, maybe 2 1 counts, and, uh, and stuff like that. If you're ahead in the count, though, uh, you're probably going to want to revert back to that uh, 00 count strategy where if you have a 3 1 count, you're probably just going to want to sit right here and wait for a single pitch. And if you get that pitch, then you crush the ball. If not, you know, you, you, you let that pitch go and uh, and you live to fight another day. So while you're doing this, uh, this method, this very beginner method right here of using the count to dictate your approach at the plate, while you're doing this, uh, there are going to be a few things that you want to do. One of those things is that you really want to try to pick up on your opponent's pattern. You want to be looking like, okay, this is a 2-0 count right here. What does my opponent do in a 2-0 count? He usually throws a four-seam fastball uh, low and away because that's his comfort zone. He's confident he can throw a strike there. Okay, maybe you want to set your PCI low and away, and you want to wait for that, uh, for that particular pitch to come in. And if it does, uh, you crush it. If not, uh, you take the information that your opponent gives you and, uh, you know, you add that to your little algorithm and you try to pick up more patterns, basically. So, uh, I, obviously, uh, I'm facing the computer right now. I'm not going to be picking up any patterns from, uh, from this opponent in particular. But, uh, because, you know, it's just randomly generated or whatever. But a human opponent, believe me, they have patterns. They, they are not random. They will give you, uh, they will give you... Uh, certain pitches very often because that's just the way the human mind works you know uh, for, for example me I tend to throw uh, pitches up and away quite often because it's been my experience that people can tend to struggle on certain pitches up and away and then I'll, tr I'll, I'll throw some other pitches you know to try to mix things in but if you're a savvy opponent you would definitely be able to pick up on some patterns that I tend to use in situations like that and then this is probably the biggest piece of advice that I have for this particular section of the tutorial, and that is don't worry about winning. You're probably going to get frustrated with this method because this method is not a method that's designed for winning. You're not going to be winning very many games using this method. This method is designed to help you get better. So that while, yeah, you may be losing games in, you know, the regular season of rank seasons or whatever, uh, you know, against bad opponents. You, you really may be losing all of those games because of this method, but you're getting better. You're on those O2 counts, you're playing normally. You're, you're playing like a normal user would use zone hitting. And then once you see that you're starting to get better in those counts, you're not striking out as often and, and stuff like that. You're making solid contact. You're not relying on just sitting your PCI in one place. Then you can slowly roll those training wheels back and then you'll start winning more and more often. You'll be getting better and eventually you'll be in the World Series with everyone else as long as you watch all these tutorial videos. The next part of this tutorial is something that I have a feeling that you guys are really gonna hate. 
if you are new to the game and you're a beginner and you are uh, just learning how to use zone hitting and things like this, you're going to hate this part. It's not going to be fun for you. But, you know, as they say, no pain, no gain. And uh, that is kind of what this uh, this is going to be right here. It's just going to be a lot of pain for you. And uh, where are your sliders? Okay, my sliders right here. Adjust sliders. You are going to set your difficulty to legend difficulty. You're going to turn your fastball pitch speed all the way up. You're going to turn your off speed pitch speed all the way down. And you are going to apply these settings. And you're just, okay, we'll, we'll just save this. We'll change it. We'll change it later. But, uh, yeah, okay. We're at mini modes. Uh, custom practice. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to be playing on legend difficulty. Pitch feed sliders turned all the way up. All speed turned all the way down. Do not think that you're going to go in here. You're not even probably going to touch a ball, in all honesty. You're probably not going to touch it. But this is what I call the legend bat weight. Do you guys know whenever you're playing real baseball, uh, before you go up to the plate, what do you do? You use a bat weight, right? Because it makes the bat feel lighter in your hands when you're at the plate. It gives you a, a quicker swing, at least perceptually. And it just makes you more confident at the plate. You feel stronger. You just feel better. Because that weight has gotten used, you've gotten used to that weight. So when you take that off and you, and you feel that 30 ounce, 31 ounce bat, in your hand it doesn't feel as heavy at all it feels way way lighter and that is kind of the same uh kind of principle here uh so let's change this to we're gonna be hitting uh we will face uh let's let's go for, since, since we're you know we aren't gonna go all the way out with uh with verlander we're gonna go with grinky for now and then we'll go with chipper jones here so this is gonna be crazy y'all Y'all are about to see some crazy shit. Wait, 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 why is it? Is that on Legend? Okay, this is kind of strange. Okay, I didn't know this. Uh, apparently, apparently Legend on Diamond Dynasty and Legend Offline are very, very different. See, I played a game on Legend against Pitching Rebel on stream yesterday. Uh, go and check that out on Twitch, by the way. And my PCI was way, 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 way smaller than this. My outer PCI. Um, so it's kind of interesting that it's not right now. But uh, but anyways, that 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 kind of sucks. But um, okay, as you can see, that slider was extremely slow. Let's just wait until he throws a fastball. It's going to be insanely fast. See, that is very, very quick. And that's only at 91. In fact, let's go ahead and put in Verlander. Why not? Let's go all out here. This is going to be your batting weight, basically. You are going to see these pitches coming in extremely fast and extremely slow, and you're going to be like, what the hell? How do I hit this? You're not going to. Um, even the best players in the world struggle uh, a ton to make consistent content uh, contact against uh, these settings right here. It's, it's borderline impossible to do consistently. It really is. But what it will do is it will allow you to uh to really really train your brain to uh to really uh what am i trying to say to uh, to get used to the speeds to pitch speeds online because they are nowhere near this fast on all-star difficulty on hall of fame difficulty maybe on legend difficulty they start to approach approach these speeds but the off speed isn't this slow so you can really gear up for it and you don't have to worry about that slow off speed pitch coming in so uh so let's set this to repeat play yes okay but uh but as i was saying yeah seeing these pitch speeds is very very beneficial for you uh you know hopefully he throws a few more fastballs because seeing those slow change-ups all the time it really doesn't help you out that much yeah see there we go like that there is just there is just no touching that but just play on this for like 10 15 minutes every day and just train your brain to see pitches that are this fast and whenever you go online you can slow your brain down a little bit you can calm it down and you'll really really start to crush the pitches that you're seeing because you've seen way worse in your life
Okay, that is going to do it for the intermediate version of the zone hitting, or not the intermediate, the beginner version of the zone hitting tutorial. Now let's move on to the intermediate version. This is going to be for players who have gotten used to zone hitting, who are, are starting to feel a little more comfortable with it, and they're wanting to take the training wheels off just a little bit. Actually, guys, while editing this video, I realized that it was starting to get kind of long, so I have uh, finally decided that I am going to split this into uh, into two separate uh, videos and ultimately three separate videos the intermediate uh, version is already recorded and everything and it will be out either later today or very early tomorrow depending on what time I get this out and uh, then the uh, master zone hitting tutorial will be out after that so uh, so be on the lookout for all of that but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to add this little end card here just to tell you that uh, that I did decide to uh, to split it up just because this video was starting to get a little too long and it just seemed cleaner to uh, to go ahead and do it now. But anyways, I love you guys. Uh, please leave a like. Please follow me at TTV uh, Beanie Antics on Twitch at Beanie Antics on uh, Twitter. My my little handle is outraged over everything. Uh, if you're struggling to find me, um, and I love you guys. Uh, please leave a like on this video. Please sub if you haven't already. Uh, I love you guys. I will see you guys later. But until then, peace.